Hi, my name is Simon Schirm and I work with the physics team at NVIDIA. I'm going to show you how to set up deformable bodies in Omniverse Create. So here we are in Omniverse Create. I set up a stage uh, with some rigid body um, components and collision components. I'm going to demonstrate that quickly here. So we have this teddy bear rigged as a, a rigid body. We're going to change that to be a deformable body later. We have this little ball here and this horizontal bar, which is uh, connected to the world with a um, revolute joint. So first we're going to remove the rigid body and collider component, which you don't need anymore from the teddy bear. So I'm going to go here to the physics tab, uh, remove the rigid body component, remove the collider component, the formal model has its uh, own colliders, so we don't need to worry about it. Um, so I'm just going to add a new component, physics, the formal body, and uh, that's it. Um, now let's see whether that does something. This actually looks pretty good. Um, the default values uh, work fairly well and I could basically leave it at that. But I'm still going to show you the debug visualization so we can understand some of the concepts. So uh, I go to the I menu, show by type physics, the formal body, all. And here you can see the simulation mesh. This is basically the regular voxel mesh that is used for um, simulating the dynamics of the deformable. Um, and the collision mesh is used for the collisions. Both are tetrahedral meshes. So the collision mesh already seems to uh, approximate the shape fairly well, so no need for tweaking there. Um, it is uh, by default uh, set to collision mesh simplification. If I want to, for some reason, like retain the original mesh surface, I can uh, turn this off here and it will, oh, this takes a while, apparently. Yeah, so this is uh, way too detailed. Uh, we don't need that, so I'm going to switch this back. Um, same for the collision, uh, for the simulation mesh, I mean. Um, I can uh, tweak this uh, with the slider here. Uh, I could go nuts here, but as a rule of thumb, it's important to set this as low as possible. Um, uh, so uh, we still get enough degree of freedom. So I can also play with it here to see how that works looks pretty good all the bits can wiggle independently um, so that's fine let's keep that as is i'm gonna turn off debug visualization again so we see the original teddy okay um, now we're gonna add a mass component to define how heavy it is uh, to see how it interacts with other uh, rigid bodies to to um, adjust how it interacts actually so in order to do that, I'm just going to add a new component. I can also do that here in the stage view, physics, mass. OK, now I go here, I can see the mass. The center of uh, mass, the diagonal inertia and principal axis are only for rigid bodies. They have no effect here. Uh, what I can do is choose either the mass or the density. Um, I'm going to just choose the mass directly since that uh, seems to be more convenient. The teddy is about 40 centimeters high, so I don't know, half a kilogram uh, seems like a good property. And uh, yeah, nothing bad happens if I uh, interact with the ball here, so that, that seems to be good. Okay, now uh, to the last bit for configuring the deformable. Uh, is to create the material so we can uh, adjust its stiffness and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to create a new material, create, physics, material, deformable body material. You can see it has several properties. You can also set the density default, um, uh, which would be applied to the teddy bear. The whole material needs to be assigned. Uh, let me give it a good name. Any material, and I'm gonna assign it to the teddy bear, otherwise, it won't have an effect. So, um, this is the render material of the teddy bear, don't assign it to this one, it's a different material slot under the physics tab. 
uh, down here. So I'm going to choose the material here and it should have an effect. So let's see, I'm actually pretty happy. Uh, so I don't actually want to change it, but I'm going to, uh, for demonstration, I'm going to lower the Young's modulus, which controls the stiffness of the deformable wall by a factor of 100 and see what that does. It's actually still not too bad. You can see it may be a little bit stretchier. I can control other things here. You can uh, refer to the documentation for uh, looking that up. I'm gonna pump that up again here. Oh, I think it was 500,000. So uh, the friction might also be important for collision versus other objects. So uh, if I don't want my deformable to slide, I would like to turn this up. Okay, here we are at the second part of the tutorial. Uh, let's attach the teddy to the pole using attachments. So I'm gonna select the teddy and pose it, make it lean a bit forward and move it into position. So, um, now uh, we're actually already to create, uh, ready to create attachment. I'm going to select the Teddy Mesh with the uh, component and the pole with the rigid body and collider components. I'm going to create physics attachment. Uh, let's see whether that worked. It actually created an attachment object here. So yeah, that seems to work. Um, now it can be that like we didn't choose enough attachment points or something like that. So I'm going to visualize the attachment again through the menu. And you can see here it uh, displays again the collision mesh of the deformable body. Uh, this time though with differently colored feet um, because uh, those tets are marked uh, to be uh, exempted from collision detection with the pole. Uh, otherwise, we would get chittering. We are, we're already attached with attachment points, so we don't need collision um, between those two. Uh, in order to see the attachment points themselves, I can hide the deformable here. Um, let me select attachment. You can see them here. Um, now, this might not be enough, uh, and we, we want to like add some more attachment points along the rigid surface, which can be done by enabling this option here. Now, this is definitely going to be enough. We could tweak that to reduce it further, but uh, we don't care for this purpose. It's going to be a firm attachment, which is what we want. So um, I'm going to remove this feature here again. And I'm going to uh, create another deformable body, which I prepared here. And we're going to attach it. But first, first let's, let's check whether it works. Still, yes, it looks good. Uh, so I'm going to pull down this uh, model here that I already prepared. So we're a bit faster. Uh, I'm going to pause this a little bit. So we're going to eyeball this a little bit here. Okay, let's create a deformable body component on this one. Physics deformable body. Let's check uh, the resolution. Okay, resolution is way too high, uh, too high. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit to match the resolution of the teddy bear a bit uh, better. So. So much for that. I'm gonna disable the debug visualization again and now actually create the attachment. Create physics attachment. Okay. Now let's see whether that worked. Oh, well, uh, the glove is too heavy. So we already know how to uh, configure that. We're gonna add a physics mass component and uh, well, make it lighter. So I'm just gonna choose a tenth of the teddy bear mass. Let's see whether that works. Yes, okay, and we even hit the ball. 
or perfect 